Howdy once again, it's Tubal Cain, and this is episode number 29 of my This and That series, and I have several things to talk about today, and then we'll end up with viewer appreciation gifts. But here I am with Jimmy DeResta in Ohio at the uh, open house there. I think you've seen this picture before, so that's nothing new, but uh, what a great guy he is, and we, we had such fun that day. But what I wanted to talk to you today about, to start with, is... Uh, Harbor Freight. Now, everybody likes to take a poke at, at Harbor Freight and, uh, and you know their tools and all of that, but they've done some wonderful things. Now, uh, Eric Schmidt is the CEO and one of the founders and one of the richest men in California. But uh, like it or not, like a billionaire or not, he's done some great things for schools, and that's why. I'm uh, talking about this and in this flyer that came the other day and I think you all get that at your house you'll find on page uh, 47 here uh, their tools for school program saluting excellence and skilled trades uh, education and they're uh, awarding and giving credit to some of the better shop teachers I'm going to call them shop teachers and call them anything you want and many of you are lamenting the loss of uh, vocational education in the United States, but Eric Schmidt has donated millions of dollars to the schools in uh, California uh, for tools, and then uh, he has this program, Excellence in uh, Skilled Trades Education, and uh, they have scholarships and, and uh, things like that. You see their ads everywhere. And here on one of their pages, if you go to their website, you can see some of the shop teachers that they have given uh, credit to here in various states and uh, different trades. There's welding and uh, computer integrated manufacturing and so on. So give that a look. I just think that's a, a great thing that's going on for vocational education in uh, these days when we believe that it is waning. And uh, President Trump has also given uh, his thumbs up to uh, increasing the uh, funding for these programs as, uh, as we need skilled workers in this country, not just everybody going to college and being an engineer. So that's what that's all about. All right, down to the shop. Enough on that. Thanks for listening. All right, I'm down in the shop now. And remember when I did the cutaway of this Jacob's Chuck, and that was uh, this video here. And a lot of people watched that, and enthused by that, and encouraged, I went ahead and made another video on a scroll chuck, and that was a cutaway, and very few people have watched that. So if you would, uh, give that video a look, uh, what makes it work 26B, where I cut this scroll chuck apart to show how it worked. So... Take that into consideration if you would. Now, when Jimmy DeResta gave me a, a package of uh, goodies here a, a few weeks ago, I failed to mention this one. And it was a little notebook from uh, a man, probably in New York, because Jimmy's from New York, and uh, advertising this belting, which of course is a total thing of the past, but there's charts on there and, and there's directions in here on how to splice belting. So. You know, they really had neat things years ago. But uh, the man that had this had all kinds of interesting notes, uh, scientific things, shop things. But look at the handwriting in, uh, in uh, electrochemical equivalents uh, he's got here. I don't know what that's all about, but everything's in ink pen and beautiful handwriting. And uh, notes here, how to determine the speed of a shaft. And at the beginning here, he even had the courses that he was taking, apparently, in high school here. His senior year, for instance, he took engineering lab, machine design, refrigeration machine, it looks like, hydraulics, economics. So they really had a good course of study back then. And nothing was dumbed down either. So thanks, Jimmy, for that, and I hope that some of you find that interesting and I, I really haven't heard of this Leviathan belting company. Some of my subscribers out in YouTube land know that uh, I like to read and Bruce Gratton out of Long Island who's been in contact with me several times sent me a nice book on uh, Nikola Tesla. So that'll make some good winter reading. A lot of great pictures into here too. You know he's the one that 
developed a three phase power and alternating current as opposed to what Edison did. So, very controversial man, but uh, uh, that'll make good reading. Then, also from Anthony Perillo, I got a book. And it's a South Bend lathe book. This is a Lindsay reprint, but I am familiar with this uh, South Bend publication because it was a series of little pamphlets that that they had available. For instance, here's one on uh, rebabbing uh, connecting rods and all kinds of uh, automotive uh, things that uh, the South Bend lathe could be used for. So that's nice, and I still lament the fact that the Lindsay Company is out of business because crazy Mr. Lindsay uh, finally retired but that's a nice uh, addition to my library so thank you to uh, to Bruce and uh, to uh, Anthony. Many of you are familiar with Randy Richard in the shop and he's got a nice channel on YouTube so check that out if you haven't already but some time ago Randy uh, sent me this nice brass scriber and you've seen me use it quite a bit very sharp. I use it for layout. And uh, the problem is that it will roll off the bench because everything in my basement is pitched toward the sewer. Well, not really. When it rains, I get water and it never goes toward the sewer. But anyway, that's beside the point. But uh, then later on, a few months later, he sent me another one made of stainless steel, also round, and it's scribed with uh, his name and a serial number and they're going to show up. That's not going to show up real well in this light. And I like that as well, but it also will roll off the bench. So when I thanked him, I mentioned, you know, you ought to make one, Randy, with uh, hexagon stock. So sure enough, I get another package the other day. And there it is in hexagon. Randy Richards in the shop serial number one and my name on it so that's awesome nice and sharp very crisp knurl again you can carry this in your pocket but don't carry it on an airplane but there you set that down on the bench it's going to stay there so thank you Randy ever so much my brother had told me years ago that if you got something with a wooden handle that rolls off the bench put an upholsterer's tack in there you know and that keeps it from rolling just some ideas for you. When I was out in Ohio I met big Jim Bollinger and he does wonderful welding videos so take a look at his website if you haven't seen it already his uh, his channel and his uh, trademark is a big cowboy hat and he's a big guy and he's a fun and interesting man and he sent me some uh, stickers and some uh, business cards and so on so thanks for that Jim and then of all things I received another letter but it's from a, another Bollinger, a Doug Bollinger from Pennsylvania. do right Shop is, uh, is in Florida but here's what uh, Doug sent me and he saw my recent video on uh, the little Stewart engine that I built and I was talking about running it sooner or later on a little uh, with a little generator that I'm going to make. So he sent me along and he's done, he made one of those generators. So he sent me a variety of different pulleys so I could have different ratios. So you'll see that later on. Some tiny little hex screws to aid me in building it. And those are brass and those aren't easy to find uh, in the small sizes. And then the drive belts. And where are you going to find those? And these are the drive belts that can be cut to length if you cut off the right end, correct end, and then uh, you just screw them together like that. So you'll see some of that uh, later on. Thank you, Doug, for those pulleys. If you watched my videos last year, you saw that I made a belt guard for my South Bend lathe, and the Ty Powell sent me these little uh, hubcaps that say South Bend. Actually, they're off of a baby buggies, and he sent me a couple more, and after he saw my video on nickel plating, he suggested that I nickel plate these in a demonstration. Well, they don't really need plating, but you may see these later on, so uh, thank you, Ty, for your thoughtfulness. Over the years, you've seen me use Unbraco K2 
cap screws and I've showed you this label and and uh, I found them to be a quality item and they were a division of SPS but anyway and they made other products too for instance here's uh, spring pins roll pins and in the heavier boxes they use those reinforced corners that's also SPS and I think maybe that's why I talked about them but of all things a man by the name of Bill Tim from out uh, in Pennsylvania and he's had some health problems so he's been watching a lot of videos but he sent me a nice letter and said that his father at one time worked for SPS and I suppose these were given away to employees or salesmen or something but here's a a couple of uh, pens that say unbreako socket screws on them whether or not they're still in operation I don't know but Anyway, and uh, that's pretty cute that on the end there are cap screws, gold plated and the oxide finish. So, thank you, Bill. I like those. Well, that's about it for this episode of This and That. Uh, thanks for watching. Be sure and watch my many other videos. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.